today we are going to worship the Adi Shakti and the reflection of Adi Shakti within you is the Kundalini. We can say this is the worship of the Adi Shakti and Adi Kundalini. If you understand that all this, whatever is created on this universe and in many universes is the work of the Adi Shakti. <coughs> now many people believe that there is one God, it's true, there is one God, God Almighty, but He has His own powers which He can embody into someone and can get his own manifestation expressed. So first of all, he did was to create the power of Adi Shakti. When it was created, then there was a sound the sound that we call as Om, Logos or anything you call it, by the primordial sound. And these three powers came out of that sound is A, U and Ma, Om. The Adi Shakti is the one who embodies the desire of God Almighty. The desire of God Almighty comes out of His compassion and for His own expression, for His own manifestation, for His own reflection. I would say that He must be tired of loneliness, so He must have thought, of creating a partner who will manifest his desires. Thus, the power of God Almighty separated from him and formed an embodiment of his compassion, his desire to create. They say in Sanskrit they use the word chid vilas, is the enjoyment of the Adi Shakti. Chid is, as you know, is chitta, is attention. The attention has its own joy and to manifest that joy of her attention, she created all the universes, she created this Mother Earth. She created all this nature, she created all the animals, she created all the human beings and she created all the Sajogis. This is how the whole creation has worked out. At this juncture one may ask that why did she not straightforward create human beings? That was the idea of God Almighty, just to create human beings without telling them anything, something better animals than the rest of the animals. But Adi Shakti being the mother, she had her own way of expression that she thought she must create the mirrors for God Almighty to see His face, to see His image, to see His character and that's how this long range of evolution took place. This evolution had to work out this way because they had to know from where they come. We must know that we come from nature. 
even nature should know it comes from the Mother Earth. And Mother Earth herself has her own Kundalini. And she too is not just a dead earth, but she knows, she thinks, she understands and she regulates. You can see in the nature how every tree has got its own limitations, how every fruit is produced in a particular tree, how it happens, what works out, this kind of regulation. If this Mother Earth was moving with a higher speed than what it is today, we would not have been born even. Would have been less speed, it would not have worked out. See the whole plan that was made. It's a beautiful plan that the Mother Earth has to move around the sun in such a manner that <coughs> different seasons are created. That's why the power, the Param Chaitanya, which is the power of the Adi Shakti, is also called as Ritambhara Pratya. This is the power that does all the living work, all the organization, all the creation. <coughs> In our human ego, we start thinking that we do something, we can create. We cannot. We cannot even create a dust of particle, leave alone anything else. Whatever is created, out of that we may combine, we can put together and create something. But if you see that this whole thing is nothing but beyond our any power, we cannot create anything. But what do we create is <coughs> our myths, I should say. For example, something is made of gold, still it is gold. Now something is made of wood, whatever it is made, is wood. The principle is the same into everything. So whatever may be your birth, whatever may be the country you are born, whatever may be your culture, you are human beings. Basically, you all are the same. You laugh the same, you smile the same, also you cry the same way. I haven't seen anybody crying with his hands, tears falling out of his fingers, do they? And that is how one has to realize that we are all bound by some common principle of life. And the common principle of life that is bound us by the Adi Shakti is that we all have Kundalini within us. All the human beings have Kundalini within us. It is not, it is not in the animals also, but it's not so developed. It's not yet what we call is full form of Kundalini that can be awakened. But in the human form only it has evolved as a connection, as the one that is the divine force within us, which is the reflection of <clears throat> the Adi Kundalini, which is so easily awakened in this Kali Yuga. This is the common principle we all have. So we have to respect all the people, all the human beings, whatever nation they come from, whatever country they belong, whatever color they have, because they all have their Kundalini. 
then there are people as you people are who are awakened, who are enlightened, who have got your Realization. So when you understand that this is the enjoyment of the attention of the Adima, of the Primordial Mother, it's just the play and the enjoyment, then when you have achieved your full growth in spirituality, what should happen to you? What should we fe feel? And how do we then exist? This is the question many a times you have asked. Now when you ask questions itself it shows that you are not there, because once you are there you don't ask questions. Secondly, what happens to you is that you become just the existence, just the existence. And that existence that you become, then you start reflecting the character of divinity. This divine character is expressed not only nowadays, also much before. In every religion we have had people who had this divine character very well developed. For example, even we can say the people who lived three thousand, four thousand years back. In Colombia, I found that in their statues they had Kundalini and a kumbha also. Commonly, whatever we found out, they had a kundalini being expressed, three and a half coils. This kundalini we have within ourselves is now proved to you. You know that there is this power within us. Also you've come to know what happens when we deviate from the middle path of our ascent. Here also the same Kundalini, which is the expression of the Primordial Mother, tells you on your fingertips what's going wrong with you, where are you lacking, what is your problem. So now, when we are enlightened people, we have become saints, and we are above all others, what should we do is to understand fully well, not only mentally but from your heart, that now you have got these divine vibrations. And these divine vibrations can tell you where are you, what are you, where is the problem. Also it will tell you, wherever you go, like I, I talked to some people who went to Jerusalem. When they said the Mother, the whole place was just vibrating with spiritual vibrations. They went to Chindwara, somebody, and he said, I'll find out Mother's place, what is there? After all, it's not difficult, through vibrations I'll find out. So he said, as soon as I touched the platform, I started jumping. I said, now what to do? <laughs> From here only there are vibrations, how will I reach Mother's place? So then he sat down and started wondering, now how will I find out where did Mother take her birth? He was sitting down and then he saw uh, the star, which is the Venus. Ah, he followed the Venus star and then he went and asked and that's how he found the place. So the whole plan, the whole thing is not done haphazard in any way. If you see a tree, every tree has leaves and every leaf is given chance to have the sun's rays. In the nature, if you see, it's so harmonious, so beautiful. We are the ones we spoil the nature because we don't understand that we have come from nature and we have to respect. 
I've already told you many a times about how human beings were formed by different uh, chemicals who came also, carbon came from the Mother Earth. All this leads us to understand that we have a very big responsibility. The whole work has taken thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And now you all have reached a state where you have become yourself, you know yourself. This is a very big, uh, I think, sh say, a very big jump in the evolutionary process. Just make it move in there. The evolutionary process started long, long time back. Just uh, move it, uh, keep it, uh, moving is better. No, no, don't fix it. Keep it moving. Some of the better. <coughs> so I think it's very important for you to worship the Adi Shakti and the Adi Kundalini. It's absolutely without understanding, absolutely you cannot understand uh, how you have become a saint. When you will know within yourself you have got all these centers. And these centers have to be awakened through the awakening of the Kundalini. And that the Kundalini expresses it herself through your fingertips. Unless and until you fully identify with this knowledge, there's always a possibility that you will devi deviate from the path of your perfection. Many people who come to Sahaja Yoga, I've seen, they meet some Sahaja Yogis who are halfway and because they are mental, they start arguing, how is it this is this way, how is it it is this way. <coughs> How is it he is a Sahaja Yogi, he behaves like that? There are so many ways of people relating to the power of the Divine. I've told you in the beginning that God felt lonely and that's why He created this Adi Shakti and through her the whole universe was created. But also true that as you are seeking, also the Divine is seeking you. Also that your seeking is absolutely awarded if you understand the simple thing about Divine, that it is the one that has given you intelligence. It is the one that has given you wisdom. It is the one which has given you whatever you have as you are singing, that whatever we have is given by you. If that is the case, that all that you have is given by your Kundalini, by this mother power of your Kundalini, then it's very important to understand what is the need of keeping her happy and her satisfaction. You must try to see what makes her happy. As I said, there's a relationship between the realized souls and the Divine. The Divine is happy when you are happy. 
Or we can say when the Divine makes you happy and you are happy, then the Divine is happy. It's such a relationship and it's so close, it's so close. We can say as the sun has sun's rays or the moon has its own moonlight. It is so close, it's so ingrained, so much built in and that should give you full control over yourself and over your development. They describe it in various ways that you must surrender. Now, <coughs> one surrenders, of course with fear, if somebody comes with a sword and says, all right, you surrender, you may. But as soon as that person will disappear, you will take out another sword and cut his throat. That surrender has no meaning. That surrender is a surrender which is just forced on. All such surrenders have been creating problems because it has a reaction. But your surrender to Divine is extremely joy-giving, like a salt. which dissolves into the sea automatically, into the water automatically. That soluble nature is really joy-giving. If you can just feel that within yourself that you are one with the Divine, you are dissolved in the ocean of the Divine. And then what takes your form is nothing but extreme love, compassion and as a result extreme joy. Many people tell me that Mother is very difficult to forgive someone. But I think it's very horrible not to forgive someone. There's a great joy in forgiving, very great joy in forgiving. And as soon as you forgive, the Divine takes over and Divine will look after you. Nobody can disturb you. But first you must surrender to the Divine that is what is forgiveness. Just don't bother yourself as to punish somebody or to do something against somebody. The Divine takes over from you and does whatever is needed. And in such a beautiful manner that it is worth seeing how it works. Adi Shakti's power, this Divine is described in every religion in Islam called Ru, in the Bible is called as all-pervading power, it's called as Alak, that is not to, which cannot be seen, Niranjana, the one which is beyond any attachment sort of thing. All these words are used for this Divine power. People have heard about it, people have sung about it, but unfortunately very few people felt it. And when they felt it, they didn't know how to give it to others, how to make others feel it. So whatever they talked became sort of a uh, story or something nonsensical. Nobody could believe that they have felt anything like that or could imagine that there is such a power really exist. Now, luckily it has become quite a universal fact for all of you 
that you know there is this power. You are sure about this power because you can feel it within yourself. And when you feel it, you feel very joyous. You can make out whether somebody is telling you the truth or not because you can see on the vibrations, on this, uh, I should say, the the power of Adi Shakti. She tells you the truth. If somebody has done some harm to you, for example, now you may say that, Mother, if you forgive that person, then it's not the truth because he has definitely harmed and if I forgive that means I accept that he has not harmed. This kind of argument is possible. Now you will see, you'll be surprised that you forgive that person because the truth is whether you forgive or you don't forgive, you don't do anything. That's the truth. So out of compassion, if you forgive someone, compassion becomes the truth. It's the compassion that tells you the truth. So all the absolute truth that you know is through the compassion of the Divine Power. Maybe sometimes people say, we saw the vibrations, Mother, and we felt this way and still it happened. It makes no difference. Whatever has happened, has happened, doesn't matter. You have felt the vibrations and you asked the vibrations and you acted upon the vibrations, that's all. Whether it turned out to be that way or not is different because it had to be the other way now. Some drama is going on, it's the chidvilas, is the uh, enjoyment of the chitta of the Divine. So it's a play going on. If you can see that play, then you don't get disturbed, it's a play. How it works, how it is organized is not your headache. You just have to see the play of the Divine, how it works out. We have seen now, all of you which you call as miracles have happened. Mother, this miracle has happened, that miracle has happened and uh, I know is all uh, the miracle of the Divine. Despite that, our faith in the Divine is not so much enlightened faith. When you have the enlightened faith, you don't worry about things which are very important in life. It works out well and good. If it doesn't work out, well and good. It should not be assumed that once you are a realized soul that the whole world can fall at your feet. Not necessarily. It's a play. It's a beautiful enjoyment of the attention of the Adi Shakti. So if you can become the witness, if you can really become the witness of the whole thing, then what happens? You go spiritually much closer, I should say you get dissolved into the Divine Power. That dissolution has to take place. That's why today's puja is very important for you because if it was not Adi Shakti who had taken an incarnation, this work could not have been done. This could not have been done because it had to be something that would encompass all the angularities of this human life all the aspects of this human life. It had to be such an incarnation that could absolutely see human being as a whole 
not only his physical self, mental self, emotional self, or his particular ideologies, or his particular domination, no, as a whole, as a human being. And human being, as I told you, is all inside, all of them are just the same. Some are more sensitive and seeking genuinely. Some are not seeking genuinely and some are not seeking at all. But the seeking also is given to you by Adi Shakti. Now it happens that in the evolutionary process one fish came out of the mother. Out of that sea which was like a mother to the sea, came out. And then about ten or twelve fishes came out. Then after some time shoals of fishes came out. In the same manner your evolution has worked out. As it is, we think we have quite a big number, we have crossed the number, what Epicolus has said, or we can say it, what Saint John has said, we have already crossed it, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You see, it seems that it's a very fertile area, very fertile time, this Kali Yuga, where there are so many people who are taking to divinity. I mean, it's the right time to do this. Yesterday when I saw your play, I, I, I have seen all that myself, and I used to wonder what is going to happen to these people. How are they going to taste Sahaja Yoga? They have, they have taken, they have taken to spirituality. See, all these diverse things that you see in modern times should not disturb you much, because that has to be that way. It's a drama, it's a play, and in that drama you should know that it will work out in such a beautiful manner that after some time you'll find nothing but the Divine dissolving all the useless things that we have, like our conditioning and our ego. We'll have so many people in such a By the time two thousand years, We'll have many, many Sahaja Yogis all over the world. Once we have lots of people, many would jump into it. That's human nature also. You see, they won't take to it till we have lots of people. And once we have a multitude, they'll jump into it. So some people all are always worried, Mother, what about others? We are now in the heavens, we are enjoying life, what about others? It will all work. It will all work out, but your attention should be in. How I can dissolve others into this ocean of joy, of this compassion? Now you'll be surprised that it is your own compassion only which is going to give you strength. This compassion within you when you will see people are getting completely drowned, completely destroyed, your compassion itself will make you powerful and you will do everything that is needed. You will give up all nonsensical activities and you will really dedicate yourself to emancipate other people. And amazingly, as you will do this, your own level of spirituality will rise. As you see, I would say that when you dissolve, say, some salt in the water, the water rises. In the same way, the more people, when they will come to Sahaja Yoga, the di Divine Power will manifest much more. It is manifesting already. But the more people there will be, there will be much more manifestation, because it will be like so many channels that will be working it out. 
So at this juncture, when we are all know that there is divine power, you all have got your realization, and that you are all now saintly people. Then we should see to people who were like, like we had Sufis, then we had Nathpanthis, we had Gnostics, all kinds of people in every religion. What did they do? They went all out to awaken other people to the fact that there is divine power. They could not give realization as such, they couldn't give proof of that, but they worked it out, they talked about it, they sang about it. That's what we have to understand, that nothing should deter your compassion to be expressed. When you know the people are getting drowned, they are in terrible mess, this is a kind of a huge, uh, I should say, onslaught of the evil on human beings. And if you have that compassion within you, you will go all out to save them. That is what is the work of this Chidvilas, of this enjoyment of your attention. Your attention itself will enjoy when you will start bringing more people into the power of divinity. Without divinity there is no saving for human beings, that everybody admits, everybody says. But they have no idea as to what is divinity, what is the way to achieve it. While you all have this, you have power to awaken Kundalini, you know all about chakras, you know all the defects of the chakras, you can find out from the vibrations the truth about everything. The more you use this power, the better it would be. So you have to go to areas where so far you have not gone. For we I haven't got many people from the black race, I think from Africa. So I'm thinking of going next year to Africa to work it out. Also we have so many other areas where I find we have to work it out that if this compassion is within you, then it will compel you also to do work that will bring solace to people who are not even seeking. I am already busy with forming some NGOs, you see, which will really create very beautiful institutions for people who have nothing, they are starving, they are under trouble, they are under great ordeals. Only you can do it because coming to Sahaja Yoga, you have dropped out your greed, you have dropped out your lust, it's finished. Now you are so free and so independent. With this the compassion, cannot take any other form because many people have seen that they start this kind of work and then they start becoming leaders or they start becoming uh, rich people or plundering others. This you will not. You are the, really, as Christ has said, salt. Salt which is completely dissolved in the divinity and this salt is going to dissolve many others. Once we start spreading out like that, I'm not saying we should be like missionaries or something, converting people into Sahaja Yoga by force, no. We have to look after <coughs> what they are lacking first of all. Actually, there are very few people in this world who are honest, who don't have greed. I have known people who have never had any greed, but as soon as they got some powers, they started uh, showing 
such tremendous greed that surprisingly when you know that person who has never done such a thing and suddenly you find he's become so greedy, you can't believe it. But not Sahaja Yogis. Sahaja Yogis won't do that. They'll enjoy their compassion, not anything else, not their lust, not their greed, and also the so-called deviations like taking to drugs and drinking and uh, other nonsensical things. Because they know what do they enjoy, where lies the enjoyment. Once you know where lies the enjoyment, you will try to have more of it. And more of it, it's so easy now for you to do it. I would say, as the men are working it out, women should work it out, because women have more sense of compassion, more sense of compassion and forgiveness. Normal women, I am not saying about abnormal, you know, I am saying about normal. It should be, because they are mothers, they have children, they have known what is love for the children. Mother doesn't expect anything, she just wants her child to be all right and happy, she enjoys her child, that's all. If you are a woman, inbuilt within you is this compassion. See, I've seen young girls, they too, if they find a little baby, they'll all run after that. They would like to take the little baby, they have dolls and they look after the dolls just like their own children. So, for women it should be much easier to show compassion and to express and to manifest. It should be. And as you are all married also, your husbands will feel so much strengthened by your own nature of divinity. What do you sacrifice? Some say, I sacrifice this for God, I sacrifice that for God. What is there to sacrifice for God? What does God need? He doesn't need anything. What is there to sacrifice? Only you have sacrificed your brains. That's all I can say. No wisdom is there. Nothing to sacrifice. And if something <coughs> has to be done, has to be done. I've seen also some ladies coming to me, Mother, we have to cook, then we have to look after the children, then the household and this and that. What's that? Otherwise what will you do? The whole day what will you do? Like the bats which hang themselves the whole day, are you going to hang yourself? You have to do something. While doing it is, is just nothing great, you know. And then to sacrifice, I don't know what are you going to sacrifice. Actually what you are sacrificing is your joy, is your happiness. If you achieve <coughs> that state of enjoying your own self, then you will be never tired. You will never grudge. You will always say, Mother, we are enjoying everything. This is a very important point that we should realize that if somebody is a woman or a man, they have the same thing which we call as Kundalini. But a woman, as it is, as you know, is mostly left-sided, she has more power of compassion. In the same way the man has more power of action. So the compassion has to become active. In this combination, everything will work out in a very beautiful manner. But if that balance is not there, it's going to be difficult. I've seen most of the marriages we have had have been successful, but some of them have not been, because I think some of the women have been men and some of the men have been women. And I'm really sometimes very I'm happy, I get pain to see that unnecessarily they are creating problems. 
they are both sarjogis. Ha, if they were not sarjogis, I can understand. If a sarjogi is married to a non sarjogi, I can understand. But both are sarjogis. Now here you should understand the relationship of the God Almighty and Adi Shakti. It's complete unija, complete understanding. God Almighty is the spectator, He is watching the work of the Adi Shakti. She is compassion, of course. She doesn't say that something should be destroyed or something should be killed, all right. She is compassion. But He is the one who takes charge. If somebody tries to do something against the Adi Shakti, it is He who takes charge and changes the whole scene in such a manner that we don't understand how it has happened, how it has worked out. What you have to do is to enjoy the play. In the same manner, Sahaja Yogis should have a unison, should have understanding, enjoyment among yourselves. If a Sahaja Yogi cannot enjoy, who is going to enjoy life? I can't understand the one who has his Kundalini awakened fully, who has felt <coughs> the all-pervading power of love, who knows what is the truth, who is standing on the complete oneness with the Divine. How can such a person anyway have any kind of problem. It is to realize that you are sitting in the realm of God Almighty. You have entered into His kingdom and you are under the attention, compassion of Adisha. But it is like this, you, if you make a beggar who has been begging all his life sit on a throne, he still begs sitting on this throne. So that is sometimes is the situation with Sahaja Yogis. I receive some funny letters sometimes when I start wondering, if this fellow is still in the limbo state, is not it Sahaja Yogi nor a human being in between somewhere. <laughs> so <coughs> at least that state should be overcome by all of you, because it has a very bad impression also for other people and for your own life. For your own life, it's very important that you should grow fully into the understanding of the powers that you have got and the love that your mother has. When you say you must surrender yourself to mother means what? What do I have to surrender? Uh, uh, just think of it. What you are surrendering is what is perverted, whatever is destructive, whatever that misleads, whatever is your ego and your condition. That's all you are sur surrendering, just to purify yourself, to enjoy yourself and to know God Almighty. If, if you don't know yourself, how will you know God also? Impossible. So to know yourself, you have to evolve. I know there are some very great Sajogis, some Sajoginis also, many are there, but still I would say that there are so many other areas where all these very greatly evolved surgeries have to enter into and work out. You can do it. You see, I was surprised that in this place, when I came first in Rome, we had advertised well, there was not even a single person in the hall. So I said, Baba, what is going to happen in this country? Now we have so many surgeries. Unbelievable. 
But as it is growing sideways, it should also grow upwards. As it is growing in quantity, it should also go, grow in quality. And as you grow in quality, more and over more people will come. Because I know all the time, you are so collective that you all the time you feel, Mother, you see my uncle is still not a Sajogi, see Mother, my brother is not yet a Sajogi. <coughs> I know that feeling you have, that my father still is not a Sajogi. So forget about them, but those who are seeking, approach them. They are your real relations. Then afterwards, when all these people will join, your father, mother, brother, sisters, children, all of them will jump in. At that time, they will wait and wait and wait. They are not seekers, but those who are seekers, you should seek them, you should find out where are they. My attention is, of course, is with you, and every time you think of Me, I'll be at your service fully. Whatever you want, I will be there to help you whichever way is possible. Anything <coughs> you find very difficult is not, because you take it upon yourself, but if you leave it to this all-pervading power of Divine Love, to this power of Adi Shakti, Param Chaitanya, nothing is difficult, nothing is so bad that you cannot manage. I don't know if I have to talk about Sadi Shakti, it will take at least ten hours minimum. So I think I better stop now <coughs> and we should keep something for the next Adi Shakti puja. Somebody asked me, uh, is it necessary to have this puja? I think if there is any puja that you should do is this one in Sadi Shakti. It's very important that this puja must be performed because that is how you grow. This reflection improves and you grow more and more within yourself through the power of Adi Shakti or through the power of Kundalini. As you know that Adi Shakti has her own Kundalini which is the Adi Kundalini and the reflection of that within you is the Kundalini. So you have to worship and is the best way to please your own Kundalini, your own Mother who has given you this birth. May God bless you.